A smooth, graceful pedaling style is something many of us aspire to. You may even like to call it souplesse. The likes of Wiggins, Oncatil, Voss, the names that are all banded about when we discuss the perfect pedaling style. But does such a thing exist? Greg LeMond, another famous peddler, used to describe scraping his foot through the bottom of the pedal stroke as a way of generating power, and some coaches have also encouraged this. But does such a technique help? Can we learn to improve our pedaling style? But most importantly, will it make us any faster? We took a dive into the science to find out. The first person we talked to on our journey to pedaling perfection was sports scientist Dr. Louis Pashfield, who's worked with British Cycling over a number of Olympic cycles and is now a professor over in Canada. You may recognize Louis from some of our previous GCN videos when he appeared as a genie us. He did actually say that theoretically there was a perfect pedaling technique. From a mechanical point of view, this would involve pushing forward when the crank is up, pushing down when it's at three o'clock, pulling back when it's at six o'clock, and then pulling up on its return. However, in practice, this isn't actually how people pedal. Louis says that with coaching and instruction, you can learn to apply power a little more evenly, but generating a useful pulling up force is really hard to do. And at best, you might only make a 3% improvement in mechanical efficiency if you pedal in the way I've just described. Louis says that the problem is our bodies are really good at repeated contractions. Our muscles work great when they're doing those repeated contractions and they have that rest period. What they're not great at is extended isometric contractions that's when there's no rest periods. Imagine trying to hold a squat for a long period of time as an example. Oh, that's enough for me, oh, Jesus. If you change your pedaling technique in a bid to become more mechanically effective, you're likely gonna extend that period of muscle contraction and reduce the period of recovery in each pedal cycle. So you're gonna fatigue quicker. According to Louis, all of this means that the gains in pursuing mechanical efficiency are not really worth pursuing. However, there are a few exceptions. One of these moments, a maximal effort sprints of 10 to 30 seconds in duration. That's when you want to put out as much power as possible without worrying about fatiguing because you're going to have to do your recovery time once you finish the effort, that's why it's called a sprint to the finish line. Although it's not just sprinting though where you want to be as mechanically efficient as possible, it's also standing starts and really steep hills when you want to try and put out as much power as you can in a short space of time. In practice then, how do pros and elite riders actually pedal when compared to your average rider. Well, according to Dr. Passfield, the differences are actually pretty subtle. So it's mainly the fact that pros and elite riders would make the most of that downward phase of the pedal cycle, really stomping all the way to six o'clock, coinciding that force with the maximal forces exerted when the pedal is moving downwards, rather than worry about any dead spots or pulling up on the pedal's return. Another area where it paid off to be more mechanically efficient is mountain biking, riding on terrain like you see behind me, even rougher actually. And here you want to maintain as much traction with the ground as possible. So you're looking to have that real smooth pedaling style rather than that stomping action, which does cause your wheel to slip and you to lose traction as a result. And it's an interesting point because it asks the question, maybe that's why we see the likes of Pidcock, Van der Poel, Van Aert come across to the road, dominate in the fashion they do, but also have that really smooth pedaling style, which is so characteristic of those riders. 
How does bike fit impact our pedaling style though? We know that the way we fit to our bikes plays a huge role in our ability to put down the power when it's needed. But can we adjust things like our saddle height to potentially achieve the perfect pedaling style and technique? To find out, I thought I'd speak to Phil Burt, who's been head of physiotherapy at British Cycling for 12 years. He's a cycling ergonomicist. We actually consulted Phil when we built El Alto, the 36-inch wheel bike we built as part of a documentary over on GCN Plus, which is still available to watch, Reinventing the Wheel. Aside from working with uh, super big giants, Phil has actually helped the likes of Bradley Wiggins and Sir Chris Hoy fit their bikes to perfection. So he was the best person to ask and I started off by asking him what his views were on the perfect pedaling stroke and whether it even existed. Oh, the ultimate question, God. <laughs> um, it probably exists in a theoretical world, yes, in terms of physics and mechanics, but um, I don't think it really exists in the real world because really pedaling is an outcome of a, a, a human being transferring muscle power to the pedal. And of course, all human beings are different and they achieve that in many different ways. I think a good thing to make a, uh, an analogy with here is um, um, what I call a um, preferred movement pathway. And if you talk to really clever ergonomicists and biomechanists, they talk sometimes talk about if me and you try to jump over a box, uh, we'll achieve that task in different ways. You know, you'll do it in a slightly different way. And that way will be a subject of your height, injury history, muscle strength, what you've trained at, what you're good at, you know, so many different factors. Pedaling is no different to that. The task is the pedal, it moves the pedal. And because human beings are also different, we achieve that in many different ways. Some interesting studies have been done where they look at the most mechanically efficient way of pedaling. Unfortunately, which basically means using all your muscle groups to pedal, is, um, is actually the gross, most inefficient way of pedaling. So gross efficiency goes down. So you can see, it, that, so in, in short, no. I think there is a perfect pedal stroke, but it's different for everybody. So do you think it's worth ignoring the fact that we need to potentially work on our pedaling technique? Is there a way of trying to, you know, improve your pedaling technique to make it more inefficient? Doing things like single-legged intervals or maybe going over riding on the cross bike or the mountain bike, trying to you know, get a smoother pedaling technique? Or should we just go with what we're naturally you know, <coughs> riding at? Uh, well, I think you mentioned two really good uh, points there. Um, I I, I don't believe personally that at 90 to 100 revolutions per minute, you can consciously think about changing your pedaling technique. So, you know, verbal cue, somebody saying pull through the bottom, I don't think you can actually, that makes them much better. Because the central nervous system in the human being is controlling that, how you're generating that mu muscle power and how you're achieving that task. And to override that is a big, big thing. However, you mentioned there, um, I think doing different types of cycling, what we do know from the evidence is that if you were to pick out, um, the mechanically and gross efficient, most best best efficient pedaling stroke, often biomechanists or uh, study advanced cycling biomechanics will often refer to mountain bikers as maybe being the best because they tend to produce power for longer throughout the whole pedal stroke. So down through the bottom and some of the back stroke as well. And the uh, the the, fear, the the thinking is with that is because you're going up very, very steep um, incline squirrels and you have to keep that traction on the back wheel, that force going, otherwise you're going to slip. That that, that training and that conditioning makes them a better pedalers. But let's get back to the muscle groups involved in the pedaling technique. Mm. Um, so, so what are they first and foremost? <clears throat> and do we rely on different muscles during different intervals, so like different intensity levels or gradients, things like that. Does that change? Your major muscle groups in cycling are the power generators and the upper lower limb, so above your knee, so it's your quad and your glute, the two biggest, strongest muscles in the body per se. And they're the ones that generate the power. Below the knee, we, those muscle groups in the calf, ankle and foot, their job is to transfer that power to the pedal. Um, so they're the major ones. And some people talk about pulling up. Are on the leg that's in the pull-up stroke, you know, using your hip flexor. Um, but the iliopsoas, the hip flexor, is a, it's a tiny muscle compared to the those extensors, the quads and the uh, glutes on the other side. Plus, of course, the other leg on the downstroke, other leg on the other side, is what you're pulling up is starting to extend. So it's, it's really all about extension, you know? So when you're fitting a rider, are you looking at their body type, you know, their height or, you know, certain attributes and deciding how best they're going to fit on their bike and then translate that to kind of getting their, their best pedaling technique possible? 
what I generally find is most people are, have done uh, are sitting a little bit low normally and a bit too far and maybe a little bit too far back. And I think that comes down to um, a fear of putting the saddle too high and somewhat maybe like what, what we're conditioned to do, what me and you are doing now, sitting down at a desk quite lazily, you know. Whereas actual cycling, the most efficient position for pedaling quite often is a bit higher and further forward so we can get that the big hip extensor muscles involved involved and invariably you know you find you can actually increase someone's power quite easily by optimizing their saddle position it's all about where you have the saddle position in terms of those and um, what is aside from pedaling technique then what's the best way to improve your power and efficiency on the bike just for your average rider who wants to go out and, uh, and look to make some improvements yeah so i, I would advocate two things really one uh, would be make sure you're in the optimal position for producing power. I, I'll stick my neck out here and say I think most people are normally sitting too low and too far back to optimally produce power. Yeah, when you do that though, you have to make sure the rest of the fit accommodates that. So quite often, crank length and the front cockpit setup might be the limiting factors in achieving that. You know, um, you can do it really easy. Set up on a turbo, you can literally do, you know, repeated sprint efforts and just keep putting your satellite up and work out where the most powerful position is, you know. Phil, super interesting. Thanks so much for your time. Um, and thank you for, for enlightening us all on the, all right. on the joys of pedaling. Thanks very much. Cheers, Carl. Phil actually went on to say that it's not the end of the world if you don't have a perfect 50-50 balance between each leg. So if one leg's stronger than the other. Actually, in his view, anything up to 60-40, so 60% on one leg, 40% power on the other, is fine in his opinion, as long as it doesn't cause discomfort. Think of it like footballers choosing one leg over the other when they're taking a penalty or kicking the ball. And actually, just riding more is a perfect way to cure any potential imbalances you may have from leg to leg. I also learned a bit more from our chat with Phil. So pedals are really important to your pedaling style, particularly the float you use. So that's how much rotation you're allowing yourself when you're clipped in to those pedals. You want to allow enough float to allow your legs to move naturally, but allow too much rotation and you're potentially introducing inefficiencies to the pedaling rotation, which is going to set you back and not give you as much power as potentially you'd be looking for. It was also properly interesting to learn from Phil that the most efficient peddlers were actually Paralympic athletes with amputations below the knee. All the main power that's generated in the pedal cycle comes above the knee. Below the knee, that's all about transferring that power to the pedaling stroke. So a well-engineered orthotic limb will have little to no loss in efficiency. What did Phil think was the best way for anyone to make some improvements to their pedaling technique and their power transfer? Well, he actually recommended a really decent, stiff pair of cycling shoes as the best investment you could potentially make to improve your pedaling style. Reason for this, that they play a key role in the mechanics of the pedal strokes. So they're involved in that power transfer that comes down through your leg to the rear of your foot, the ball of your foot, and to that contact point of the pedal. But aside from that and a decent bike fit, the other thing Phil mentioned, to try a bit of mountain biking and cyclocross. Seems like a no brainer really, going out on your mountain bike in the winter, doing something different, having a whole load of fun at the same time, but also improving your technique. Yeah, I've got it under control. <laughs> All under control, I've got it. Are you sure? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I think I'm gonna have to start taking up mountain biking, but better not tell GMBN that one. Big thanks though to both Phil and Louis for their time and sharing such valuable information into the world of pedaling. It's such a simple yet curiously interesting and fascinating part to our ability to ride a bike. So thank you both for your time. I found it so interesting. And if you did at home, please give this video a big thumbs up and let us know in the comment section if you're a stomper or a smooth operator. Right, thanks for watching all and we'll see you in the next video.